Nice. filled with a bit of CA glue and um, I'm hopeful the nails have been removed but I'm not 100% but this tool will clean them off anyway we'll see how we go when we go around cheers right as you can see again if this is where the chair uh, was pinned down and, and hopefully all the pins are out but it's a cardboard tip and it will cut through small nails like that anyway um, but you just get to a rough shape as you can see um, and then just get that end there and that end there level with these bushings and then just do a little bit of a nice touch of shape that should come out quite nice and I'll take it off what are you crying for? eh? Susie? anyway, see you in a bit Right, as you can see this one, you can see where the nail holes are. Uh, this has just been uh, slightly sanded and uh, it's put some sanding sealer on. Uh, and this was so-called pre-CA'd before I turned it because of the nail holes. It's still a bit rough in places but I don't want them spotless. Now I don't know whether you can see that with the camera. There's a little tiny little show in there of brass. That was, that was because it was filled before I turned it. So the CA is filled into the glue mark there, otherwise that would have been a hole and broke away. So I reckon that looks okay. So what I'll do now is I'll put some Yorkshire grit and um, Hampshire and then fill it off with a bit of a wax. And that's one done. Cheers. This is another set of blanks on the lathe you can see the size of them and the shape of them and that's a pair that's just been finished which I've just done with a little brass thing at the end there those will go in one pocket and those will make hopefully one pen uh, which is one of the deck chair pens okay I'll turn these down get these done the other couple of three pairs I've got done and that'll be my day done cheers Okay, that's um, oh, focus, focus. That's four more pens done. I quite like um, this one with the nail holes in there and a little bit of brass showing through the tube there. Um, I like the copper collar one. That's got just uh, three bands on. That's uh, I think a silver or whatever. There's a black one with a couple of little black lines I put in and just a normal gold one uh, I can only do about uh, 20 um, I spoke to the person who gave me the off cuts of the, well, the broken bits of deck chair and um, she didn't feel as though she wanted to give me any more of the wood um, uh, sort of as such so uh, probably like about 20 and that's it um, I've just give her, I'll give her the prototype and that's about it really so there you go so there's four uh, and I'll do a 
do a couple more lighter tomorrow if I get a chance. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all soon. And yeah, they are 4 99 plus postage. I think it's about 150 postage. Cheers. Oh, just as a little thing. Yes, I'm only to show it. Uh, deck chairs. Um, well, deck chairs were uh, got the name from. Uh, there were chairs on the deck of a ship. Um, I think they were developed roughly in about 1855, and uh, they went to a show at the Melly Corner or a, a, a person from the UK, um, and they're called steamer chairs. I am reading from a little bit of a notes I've made. And they were used on ocean liners in, uh, from the 1860s, and they was known as deck chairs from then on. Uh, in year, the US, uh, John Thomas Moore, he took out a patent for the adjustable portable folding chair in 1886, and manufactured them in Macclesfield. Um, they were, uh, yeah, okay, um, they were just advertise and they'll do some posh lawn tennis chairs and um, the early versions were just uh, rectangular pieces of wood etc uh, with a bit of canvas um, very popular um, I think during the um, Titanic as well there was a there was a six uh, from the Titanic that was salvaged and I think in 19 20 or no 2001 I think one went for 35,000 pound and if you look on eBay at the moment there is actually a uh, posh one is a Damien Hurst one uh, on for sale for about four and a half thousand pound uh, with a canvas designed by Damien Hurst and I looked up that yesterday that's four and a half grand if you're daft enough to buy one and uh, there you go and Blackpool used to have the most deck chairs uh, about 68,000 um, but they have been widely removed uh, because it's um, they didn't like the idea of Blackpool with the cloth cap type of uh, brigade uh, I think it was old-fashioned and uh, not in keeping and they had 68,000 deck chairs at 150 a day um, they still keep them somewhere a, a few of them on the promenade areas I'm not too sure uh, but in Weymouth where I am at the moment um, there's been a bit of a flurry about them because um, if you're over 60 and live in Weymouth in Weymouth you can get a free deck chair if you want to to sit on of course it's about two pound a day but I won't go into all the boring details about that but I wanted to scrap that and uh, as one little uh, person was saying like you know why should people over 60 get you know deck chairs free um, but the deck chairs roughly in the last few years make £25,000 a year uh, this is off the Weymouth uh, Council so £25,000 a year profit um, I think 2015 and 16 they only made 6000 that was because of job evaluation and extremely poor weather during the peak season but um, yeah they try to save money um, by sort of charging people over 60 for the two pound for the day but uh, there you go a little bit of history on uh, deck chairs if anybody is interested anyway you can look it up on wikipedia but uh, fascinating stuff cheers and the, the the wood i found out is merpa and it's spelled m-e-r-p-a-u-h and it comes from malaysia and that's where the majority of these deck chairs in weymouth are made from um, and that's what the timber they use i could have sworn it was beach but um, i still think as beach in some of the early ones so this might be beach or it might be merpar from malaysia but anyway there you go that's enough for that cheers have a good day